Cars with spoilers and wings mean business. These things manipulate air to make your car grip better and more stable on the straights. There are some downsides, however, which is why we now have active wings and spoilers that do the right thing at the right situation. Hey gang, I'm Stipe, and here is seven most clever and advanced wings. Spoilers ahead. Had to make that joke, didn't we? Number seven. For the sake of beauty, Ashton Martin reinvented the spoiler. It's invisible, it's called the aeroblade, and here's how it works. The air is scooped up by the rear pillars and channeled down to the back of the car where it then shoots up like a jet of pressurized air through a narrow slit. That creates a virtual spoiler strong enough to counter the lift and keep you steady on the ground. It is clever and it works up to some speed. Drive faster and the passing air will be strong enough to blow that arrow blade away. At that point, a junior schooled ruler of sort will slide out and take over the role of the spoiler. <laughs> And no, it will not shield you from bullets. But why? Why reinvent the spoiler and then ruin it with the ugliest solution ever used on a beautiful car? Why? 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 Number six. I know it's not a production car, but it was this, this close to becoming one. You can watch that episode later, link in the description. But the reason why it's here is simple. It had the most advanced picnic table ever made. At the time, the Ferrari F40 was the fastest car in the world, and all it had was a crude plank above its ass. Mercedes, on the other hand, has put their plank on the motorized hinges that could flush it with the body, raise it, extend it, or even turn it into the first ever air brake. And then there's the top speed mode, which transforms it into one of those elongated land speed record configurations. The rear spoiler extends as far back as possible, and then the front splitter gets a, oh, an erection to make the car even longer. Yeah, moving on. Number five. One thing any car designer will tell you is that they hate wings or spoilers. They interrupt the lines and break up all the harmony. Well, Ferrari has to be both pretty and fast, so they had to be clever about it. And they were. See that black line between the panels going around the entire rear of the car? It's a nice styling tribute to the F50. And more importantly, it also splits the spoiler in two. That's where the clever part comes in. The top part is just a fixed spoiler that does its job, but when more downforce is needed, a bottom part slides out and up like a tiny peacock tail that pushes you firmer into the ground or slows you down when braking. That's clever and pretty. There is just one problem. This cupping, sliding motion looks a lot like it's wiping its own ass. Hmm. Did I just ruin it for you? Number four. I'm stretching it a bit here, but stay with me. Those flying buttresses reaching from the roof to the rear wheels are not just there to make it look like a USS Enterprise spaceship, but to make it go like one as well. Engage. Those are real wings that create real downforce, but also prepare the air for an active wing waiting at the back. When it's lowered, it acts more like a stabilizing spoiler and is flush with the bodywork, but once it raises up, not only can it change the angle, but it also changes, I kid you not, it changes the shape. It squishes itself for a much sharper and aggressive profile, which ends up with gurney flap, resulting in even less drag and more downforce. We're not talking just racing technology here. This is proper fighter jet stuff. I told you, it's one of the best six-cylinder cars ever. Link in the description. Number three. School time. When going around the corner, center of mass shifts, leaning the car in the other direction and putting more grip on the outside wheels. That happens with or without the downforce generating wing. So how do you generate more grip on the inside wheels too? Enter Zenvo TSRS, a track day version of a Dutch hooligan with 1200 horsepower and a broken wing at the back. Well, no, it's fixing exactly what I described earlier, leveling the car by leaning itself. It's catching more air and generating more downforce only on the inside wheels, pushing them down into the asphalt and giving them more grip, 
Then, when you're back on the straight, it goes flat and leans back to cut through the air like Hannibal Lecter through its victims. It's clever, but I can't shake the feeling that it's just broken and it's about to fall off at any moment. Number 2 One to One is a holy grail of auto industry. 1,360 kilos, just as much horsepower, and 272 mile per hour top speed. Dear God! Being so light and fast, it will have a tendency to go flying, which is why it has this twisted looking whale tail hanging from what I can only describe as its horns, just to keep it on the ground. There is a reason for all of this strangeness. It's hanging from the top because the bottom part of the wing is the one generating downforce, so you'd want to keep it clean. The horns are there to aid in straight line stability as seen in Formula 1, except Koenig has two of them, and the twisted shape is countering the pressure created by the cabin. Best of all, the whole wing weighs just 9 kilos, but can generate over 600 kilos of downforce. Basically, you could sit six Michael Moores on it and it still wouldn't break. Number 1 the reason why Lambo has set two lap records at Nuremberg in 2018, dethroning much of the track-focused cars, is this very regular-looking wing. But don't be fooled, there's also a reason why this is at number one spot. It's part of the whole ALA system, and it works wonders. The air is channeled through the hinges and into the wing, but then exits out the small holes on the underside of it. That removes any drag that the wing would otherwise create. It's like having no wing at all. Close the airflow, and the wing starts generating downforce again. Open it gradually, and it feels like the wing is raising. Open one side only, and it acts as that Zenvo thing. It's also top-mounted and made of a far stronger forged carbon composite. Honestly, with the number of tricks they're pulling with it, they could have just named it the Houdini. And boom, there's my list of the seven most clever and advanced wings. If I could add three more, it would be these. Can you recognize them? Do you agree with the list? Let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow me on Drive Tribe because next up, it's the list of the most iconic wings and spoilers ever. It's a good one. See you then.